um, I look for primarily vacant residential lots. Um, some of my favorite are infill lots, like lots in the city that already have, um, they can just hook up to water and sewer and electric, and those sell really quick. And um, oftentimes it's not like in the big cities where they sell, but it's sometimes in the smaller towns um, because people want to build, you know, um, and also in communities. I like getting properties in kind of like desired communities that are still building like quarter acre lots. You know, um, I got a property under contract and put it on the market and literally there became a bidding war on it um, just over a week, the weekend. I could have drawn the contract up, but people <clears throat> wanted it and the price went up $7,000. So my profit goes up $7,000, a little bidding war, just because it's a desired area. And I also price the property below market value so that it can turn quick. Because a lot of times land will sit on the market forever. Mm -hmm. Unless the price is right. <laughs> yeah, it's all about the price. So primarily, Christine, what I'm hearing is that you do you primarily wholesale these lots? Because we do a lot of wholesaling with houses, but is that primarily um, what you do? I do wholesale lots, but I also buy them cash and then sell or finance them. But the beauty of the buying them cash and seller financing is that I oftentimes require the down a, a non-refundable down payment and it will pay for the land 100% or pretty close so okay. that it's minimal amount of cash out of my pocket. But sometimes if it's a smoking deal, I'll buy it cash because I know that it's gonna it's gonna move and it's gonna be a um, a good profit. Sure. And the things that I that I because I go to the local RIAs and well before COVID I would go to the meetings, you know, and we would have panels oh. where these house um, wholesalers and flippers would be. Um, I was on a panel once where a guy had gone had flipped a house and he had like all this adversity. I mean, all this adversity. And he made um, like 32K. And I literally flipped some paper and made 38K, you know? And I was like, this is, this is a no brainer for me, <laughs> you know? I didn't have to deal, I didn't have to evict tenants to get the new people in. You know, he just had all this adversity. So in terms of um, the, uh, the ease of it, it's a, different, it's a different game. Tell us this, so obviously every, Everything that people hear in real estate, because we everybody's like, oh yeah, like we wholesale houses, and people say, oh my gosh, we you know we wholesale, I don't know, whatever, a couple hundred thousand a month, probably in our business, something like that, our our flipping company, and then we have our education, we have lots of companies that are going on, but people see things and go, oh my gosh, that's that sounds easy. Well, wholesaling is not easy. I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot more to it. It's not, it sounds easy conceptually. I put some under contract, I sell up our money, piece of cake. What is the hard part for you in land flipping? Because it's not all roses and sunshine. What is the what is the <clears throat> difficult parts of it for you? What are the challenges that you help people overcome with your coaching program and that kind of stuff? What are the what are the real challenges they're gonna find out there? Uh so if you are learning, so there's two different things that if you're learning how to become a land investor, the hardest part is learning how to do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like learning the technology that goes with it, learning how to use it. If you've never used Excel spreadsheets, learning how to get a list from the county, learning how to import that list into your CRM, you know, kind of like some of the things that like, if you've never been in investing, some of those like little things trip people up. And so it's, but once you learn it, it's just repeat, repeat, repeat. It's not, the challenge isn't huge once you've gone through the learning phase with anything, whether it's riding a bike or flipping land or a house. So the, uh, the people that sell to me usually have some kind of uh, situation, you know, maybe they inherited a piece of land. Sure. And they are just so sick and tired of paying taxes on something that they don't care nothing about. Um, maybe they've gone through a divorce. Um, maybe they have um, purchased it, thought they were going to move and build and never did. You know, there's all kinds of different reasons why a person will sell to me because I buy low, obviously, you know, and um, I do get called up and cursed out for my low offers, but the next phone call could be like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to sell it. <laughs> you know. So uh, the challenge is, is really just kind of working through 
their challenges, whether it's a student that I'm teaching that doesn't know how to, uh, you know, use social media or doesn't know how to use the technology or the seller who sometimes they want to negotiate the price. Like maybe I'm offering 5,000, but they want 7,000. And I'm cool with that because market value is probably going to be somewhere around 30,000. So that's a, you know, a spread that I can work with. Speaking of spreads, what is your average spread or what's your average profit? So an average profit is usually somewhere in the ten thousand uh, dollar price point. Um, I but you know I do some little lots where I sell or finance, and sometimes I'll buy them honestly for five hundred dollars, and I'll sell them for six thousand on terms. Um, you know I've done fifty thousand dollar deals. I have friends that are doing a hundred thousand dollar deal. I haven't done my first hundred thousand dollar deal yet, but I can see it coming. <laughs> Yeah. So let me ask you this question. So years ago, I went to an auction and it was a tax auction. I knew you were going to bring this up. <laughs> did? How did I know that? Yes, I did. The slivers, right? Yes. Yeah. Slivers in the island. Yeah. So we're at this thing and there were all these little weird, I don't know what you call them, but these weird pieces of land that you can't build on, you can't do anything, but there were neighbors bidding over this sucker because they wanted this sliver of land that was between them or that allowed them access to something. Or some of them were just landlocked. It was just a piece of land that somebody, you know, somebody neglected over the years and it just whatever. And in the same auction, a guy bought an island. It was, you couldn't get to it wow. only by boat. And it was, it was in the, you know, an island in the Mohawk River, which, you know, where we are in upstate New York, it's not like it's a, it's, it's nice for two months out of the year. The rest of the time, it's just cold, whatever. But he was like, I never forget the guy, there's 200 people in the room and he goes, they go, give, can you give me 10? Can you give me 10? Can you give me 10? 12? 12? Can you give me 10? Can you give me eight? The guy goes, eh, hell, I'll give you eight grand for an island. What the hell? It's only eight grand or whatever. And, and it was a pretty, it was like a two acre island. It just kind of cracked me up. And I'm, I'm, I said, people are like, what are you doing? He goes, I don't know. And I thought to myself, <laughs> taxes on it. Yeah. I mean, right. But he had an island that he could take a boat to and, you know, not fish. <laughs> yeah. I mean, whatever. Right. So I, as you're talking, I'm thinking about the fact that all these little irregular, that's what it's called, like irregular lots. Yes. Do you mess around with those at all? Do you have any success with those at all? Or are those too much work for the money? So some of them I don't mess with. Like if it's a ditch between two houses, I'm not, I'm not going to go for it. But I do get landlocked property. I do get wetlands. And the wetland sells so much faster than you would ever imagine. I mean, literally landlocked, uh, maybe some ATV paths to it, maybe not. No easements. You know, yeah. So at first you think that, oh, who's going to buy this? And then in the group that I'm in, the LPG group, you start running across other land investors and they're like, oh yeah, I get it. I sell them all the time. There's this uh, guy in the program. He sells the junkiest piece, pieces of land and he has like over 200 seller financing on junky pieces of land that he just cash flows every single month, 200 of them, yeah. you know, and that's his niche. So some of them are definitely junk. If it's a retention pond, what are you going to do with a retention pond? If it's a ditch between two neighbors, what are you going to do with that? But yeah, I do sometimes make the decision to get these junky lots and just put it out there because you just don't know who is looking for your little piece of junk. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. So you, you, those little pieces of junk, you can probably pick up for under a thousand bucks, a lot of those things, right? Real, because nobody wants them and they're, they're paying and the taxes have to be next to nothing. Next, I had a eight acre lot if it wasn't wetland it would have been you know a screaming deal just because of the location but it was at eight acres underwater totally underwater some guy i bought it for like literally a thousand dollars in and it was in an area called claremont florida which is a hot hot area he's like yeah i'm just gonna buy it for a future investment and and it was right across the street from a lake you know, and I probably made maybe $5,000 on it. You know what I'm saying? Not, not a tremendous <clears throat> amount, but I just took the risk to put it out there. And somebody was like, yeah, this, this is great. It's in Claremont, you know, cool, good. I hope he makes money on it in the future. <laughs> right. 
gonna have lots of lots of alligators. That sounds like a lot. Lots of like, alligators. <laughs> yeah, this much water, that's perfect for them, right? So they're yeah, I know. And it's all surrounded by like a wetland mitigation, you know. So there he's limited even on what he can do with it, but you know, I'm not the end buyer. He's proud of so it, yeah. much, much like when we wholesale properties with houses, mm -hmm. um, yes. wholesale houses, really, um, you're wholesaling a, a lot of times land. Of course, I understand that sometimes you buy it and sell our finance. I get it. You're like, same with sure. us, right? You're always trying to find any way you can make it, make money on a deal. That's what what's you're trying to do. What, yeah. What's the best way to get out of that? Um, your, um, I lost my train of thought. Sorry. You interrupted me. You threw me off my path. <laughs> not what I was going to say. What was I going to well, say? You're, you're saying how we buy houses and it's kind of a similar thing, wholesaling land. And we're in a live, we're a podcast, right? Because yeah, I, I probably should remember what I'm saying. I trying, so I'm trying to jog your memory. For you're you. not helping. You're making it worse. So I don't know what it is. So I can't think what I was going to say. But anyways, okay. I, I, when, when, well, when wholesaling, I guess, here's what was my question. When wholesaling, we have a lot of lists of cash buyers and we'll go on the local MLS in the areas we work in. How do you get your, like, do you have a list of land buyers or are you just marketing on social media? How, how, how are you exiting? How are you, how are you exiting the properties? So there's a, my end buyer, uh, a few different ways. Um, I do have a buyer's list. Sure. Um, I do work with builders. I do uh, work with, um, I put stuff on uh, uh, Facebook Marketplace. I put it on Zillow. And sometimes they're just individuals. So, okay. yeah, it, and, and it's kind of crazy. Um, you just never know where your buyers are going to come from. I like your idea of, uh, that was interesting about um, if you put a house in your con or a, a house, a piece of property, let's say for five grand, and you know you're going to sell it for 20 grand with owner financing. You put five grand down, and I'm sure you, they they'll give you five thousand deposit. So now you're paid off, right? With the with the original deal. Now it's now you own it free and clear. Now you're making hundred bucks a month, two hundred bucks a month, right? On the property, right? That's kind of how that deal looks, right? Yes. And you're charging ten percent or whatever you're charging. I'm sure it's not uh, two percent you're charging for uh, for loan. So I'm sure twelve. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I figured, yeah, of course, you know. So that's how that works. So no, that's great. That's that's a pretty brilliant strategy, and you know, I think Amber and I. The success we've had with land, some of our biggest deals have involved land. So we've had yes. house, so we bought a house and it had three extra acres. So we subdivided that. We spent 10 grand, subdivided it, sold those for 120 grand extra. You know, so there's a lot of, there's a, there's a lot of value in land. And interesting that you guys, yeah, it's funny that you, you know, so this week, our team's trying to close like nine deals this week because they, they, they get paid monthly for bonuses, right? And I know they, they have deals where the tenant can't move out. Now, in New York, you know, I don't know if you know much about politics here, but it blows. So the, the uh, I call him Lord Cuomo. Lord Cuomo here won't, you know, he's, he made it so that if you have a tenant and they don't want to pay rent, well, good for them. We can't evict them. So we're, we're um, legal to evict anybody. So that's been, this has been going on for only a year. Don't even get me going on that rabbit hole. Yeah, I'll probably go on for And you wonder year. why I'm moving to Florida. Get the <laughs> hell out of here. God, insanity here. But anyways. Um, I have had to evict um, homeless uh, camps on land that I owned. Oh. And that was just a call to the sheriff's office and literally three camps. And, but it was, it was kind of a little bit sketchy because there was like needles everywhere. But it was a yeah. five acre lot. And I gave them notice. I put a I put a note on the land. I said, y'all need to leave or I'm calling the sheriff. And they didn't. So I called the sheriff and you put a note they, on the camp door on the on the tent. <laughs> put a note on the tent. Just write it on the tent. Just put a little <laughs> spray, paint. Spray, paint. <laughs> spray paint. You are hereby. <laughs> well, there was a path that went in and I literally wrote a note and I stuck it there. I said because I was closing on it and I couldn't evict them. The victim until I owned the lot. So I told him, I said, I'm going to be the new owner on this date. You need to be gone by this time. Yeah. And they weren't. So I called the sheriff and nice. In, in and so York, it's not like New York. There was, they, they, they weren't probably, paying. <laughs> you probably have to put them on salary in New York and pay them. <laughs> because they're really, really easy to work with up here. Plus, plus they'll charge you $50 million for taxes. So it's great. Oh my gosh. Like they could be your bird dog. <laughs> yeah, like, like I say with New York, I say, you know, the taxes are really high, but at least it's cold nine months a year. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know if that's good or bad. It's not. I'm being sarcastic. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's so my point my point was that when we close houses up here we have to you know there's there's stuff going on this week and I don't I don't get involved in day to day in my business but I hear my team upstairs like oh this person won't move I can't get them out oh the pipes froze the pipes froze this you know and so there's a lot of that stuff so you're right in land I can see where that that's not there you're still doing the same thing our team does you're making deals 
you're finding yes. you're finding motivated sellers on properties yes. that don't want to mess around with it and you're yes. getting out. So so tell people how they can find you, how they can learn about your system, all that kind of stuff. Tell people how they can how they can connect with you. So um you guys should have a um a little list uh somewhere for contacting me. So one of the things if you want to learn about um um land investing and land flipping and I so want to just emphasize how the uh, land profit generating uh, system is so great because it literally is step one, step two, step three. A lot of times you get involved with mentors and you sit there and you don't gain the knowledge and the information that you need. It's just a bunch of talk. Right. You know, you and a lot of times when you're first starting out, you literally need step one. OK, do this. OK, then do that. You don't have to worry about step five. Just deal with step one, yeah. you know. And um, so uh, there is a you can just join up for a free uh, webinar, which will introduce you to the system. And that's at www.landflippingfun.com. Um, Are you saying land flipping fun? landflippingfun.com and you no. should have a i think you guys probably have a link or something that was sent to uh, you there, there may be but just in case okay. it's, not, it's fun with just f-u-n not f-u-n-d you correct it's right? okay. land land flipping got, got it and then i mean so that is that is the program on land that is how if you want to get any information on that that's where you go and so i am the ambassador for the land profit generator and that is the method that you um where you learn how to do land and then i'm just like on facebook christina walls instagram christina underscore walls and um you know that's sure. how you find me <laughs> sure. okay great so I do I do want to say something though about the that's unique about the land profit generator that I've never encountered is um, the mind frame that begins to change. Um, a lot of times, like I, I came into it, I did my first deal in 30 days, made 8K, <clears throat> and it started the confidence. Yeah. So Jack and Michelle Bosch, who are the founders. They have a great um, system for support, which most careers do not have. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And in terms of building, P I mean, they build businesses. They help us build businesses, but they help us build individually as people and mind frames. And um, when you have that support, it changes the game. Yeah. You know, it changes the community. You know, and oftentimes when I get together with my co-land investors, are, we talk about deals, but we're also talking about mentally what we need to do to level up, what we need to do to go uh, hit that mark, which a lot of, which is, as an investor, we need that support because we're always coming across something new, you know, and businesses show us who we are. And sometimes who we are is uh, below what we can be. You know, and we have to learn how to look, how to uh, mentally say, OK, I was believing this about myself, but it's not getting me where I want to go. Yeah. And that's one thing that um, the uh, being in this community has helped me as a woman and as a business owner. And, you know, you start feeling like, yes, I'm rocking this. <laughs> yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm so glad that they offer that as part of their program. That's something that Glenn and I wholeheartedly believe in. I mean, our podcast is even called The Real Estate of Mind. Yeah. Because yes. It is so much about mindset. You know, we're all where we are in our life at any given time because of our thoughts and our mindset. Yes. And so if you have somebody that can, you know, challenge those self-limiting beliefs and, you know, like hold that mirror up in front of you and, you know, help you work on the things that are that are holding you back or have been roadblocks, it's, it's so empowering and it can really take you to the next level in life. So, so in closing, Christina, let me ask you this. What would you say you do on a regular basis to keep your mind strong? Because like, like Amber said, we're the real estate of mind show and our tagline for our coaching business is a real estate of mind. And so we believe that the most valuable real estate we're ever going to own is right here between our ears, right? Between our temples, ears, whatever. That's the most valuable yes. real estate in the world. I don't care. Land, house, mansions, doesn't matter that is the most powerful. So what do you do to keep yourself strong mentally as you go forward and you get beat up throughout the day? Cause you do, we all do. Anybody in business yes. gets beat up. That's it's a blood sport, no matter what you do. And if you're doing it right, if it's not, if it's not a blood sport, you're not in business. Just so you know. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Or if it's not, it'll be. So just hang yes. up. It'll, it'll become a blood sport. So what do you, what does Christina do to keep herself mentally strong? 
Um, I do a, a handful of things. I, I enjoy reading. So I try to get introduced uh, consistently on keeping myself positive through reading, uh, praying, meditating, also being aware of what is going on in that head, in that real estate, what's on that land, you know, that mental uh, uh, horizon, you know, am I dealing with uh, fear? Am I dealing with, you know, things that I've been taught from my environment? It, it's funny that you even bring that up because literally just before uh, we got on here, I was writing about the things that we identify with in our life that actually hinder us. You know, we identify with, oh, my family was like this, then I guess I'm like that. Um, I'm, I'm this race, I'm this gender, I live in this area, this is my environment. And all of those things actually hinder us from reaching what it is that our, our God-given power you know, and whenever we become aware and conscious of what's going on up here, you know, and then we start saying, okay, that's a lie. Right. Who told me that? That's right. a lie. I can do the things I want in life. And so one of the things I have truly begun to believe is that um, I can create the life that I want. Yeah. You know, it's in my power to do that. Mm -hmm. And therefore, if I don't know how to do it, I'm going to figure it out. Yeah. You yeah. know, and you got to have that tenacity and that grit and you got to say, yeah, I know maybe my mind is telling me this, but maybe it's a lie, yeah. right? you know, and let's, let's get to the goal. <laughs> yeah. my mind, uh, mind plays tricks on you for sure. But yeah. well, that's great. Well, listen, congrats on your success. Thanks for being here today. You were great as a guest. And uh, again, if people want to know more, they can go to landflippingfun.com. Correct. That's correct. where I want to direct them. And if they yes. want to reach out to you directly, tell them again where they can reach you directly. You can reach me on Facebook, Christina Walls. You can reach me on Instagram, Christina underscore Walls. You can email me at clwalls71 at gmail.com. I'm probably not going to give you my phone number. <laughs> <laughs> we already posted that, so don't worry oh, yeah. about it. Okay. <laughs> it's probably a Google voice anyways. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, thanks again for being here. It was great to have you guest, and uh, good luck with all your land sales. Awesome stuff. All right. Thanks for having me, Glenn and Amber. Have a good night. Or day. Good day. <laughs> Bye now.